you see on your screen now is a naked ape, or a nearly naked ape. The reason I have very few clothes on is not naked vlogging, which is apparently very popular, but to illustrate the differences between my own body and that of apes of different species. The most obvious difference, apart from standing upright, is the lack of body hair. There's also more adipose tissue, more fat, on my body than on that of other apes. And there are other things, such as my nose, the nostrils face downwards, and obviously I stand upright, as I mentioned. Now there is a hypothesis which has attempted to explain all of this, but it's not a popular hypothesis, and that is known as the aquatic ape hypothesis. In a way that's got the wrong name, because the idea is not that our ancestors became aquatic, but that we hung around on the seashores and so forth, and therefore acquired various characteristics which were typical of mammals that spend a lot of time in the water. Other examples would include the elephant, for example, which is again naked, and other ones, dugongs, whales, seals, and so on. We also have another thing in common with those, which is that we have a diving reflex. In fact, I think we're the only land animal with a diving reflex, which is that when we go underwater, our heart rate and respiration automatically slow down. Another thing we can do is control our breathing much more precisely than other animals, which enables us to speak. Now, one of the reasons why it's said that the aquatic ape hypothesis doesn't appear to work is that we always think of the male body as more typical of human beings than females, whereas in fact the majority of people are female, and of course the basic, basic form of the body is female and then becomes male, which is, for example, why we don't have abdominal ribs. So, if you take those things into consideration, there are various bits of evidence that support it. For example, female bodies have breasts, which are like those of dugongs, they also have a larger amount of adipose tissue, which is an insulator and also increases the buoyancy of the body. And then there are other things which are more general. For example, the oldest stone tools are chipped pebbles rather than chipped stones as found inland. The oldest hominin fossils are found closer to the coast than later hominin fossils. And the diet is largely consisted of um, stuff from the sea. So the hypothesis is basically that it we were forced to escape into a coastline environment from the rainforest when, as I mentioned in the thing about the fall, when the earth became more arid and the rainforest shrank. We had to go in that direction to escape predators. Of course this is not a popular hypothesis. The majority of paleoanthropologists would reject it. There are various other pieces of evidence for it. Another one is that we are the only primate species which comes from Africa which lacks a particular endogenous retrovirus. There are, There is a virus written into the genes of all primates that originate from Africa, which suggests that there was an infection all across Africa of all the primates. The only primate that comes from Africa that lacks that is humans. And humans are therefore thought not to have been in Africa at the time. There is a thought that they were in the Gulf of Aden, which is um, near the an Arabian Peninsula. It's been suggested that there are various problems with the aquatic ape hypothesis, but it's also been suggested that the reason for these um, objections is not to do with the actual hypothesis itself. For example, it's seen as feminist and therefore not true. Whereas obviously that's silly, because you know obviously feminism is true, and um, also because it's a Kuhnian view uh, of science that says that hypotheses are only accepted when the established members of an academic community accept them, and that certainly reflects my experience of the academic community. As you know, I'm an ex-academic, so. The reasons why the aquatic ape hypothesis is rejected are sociological rather than scientific. But then science does have a strong social element which is often not acknowledged. 
I'm not going to mention the reasons why it's generally rejected in scientific terms, but I do want to say that there are a couple of prominent people who would accept it. First of all, obviously, there's Elaine Morgan, who's the person who first proposed it. And um, besides her, there's also David Attenborough and Desmond Morris. It hasn't been published widely in academic journals because it's difficult to get into academic journals if you have a maverick opinion. And so I think it's more about an old boys club that people don't accept the, the aquatic ape hypothesis than anything to do with its academic validity. And that certainly reflects my experience of academia. I didn't come up against anyone in particular when I was in academia, but I did notice that you very much had to toe the line and that there were certain accepted opinions among the older and more established members of the community. And that's present in philosophy. And I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be present in the scientific community as well. I'm sure people try to be objective, but it isn't as simple as just something occurring in a logical, reasoned atmosphere. So if you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you dislike it, tell me why so I can improve. And I'll see you with more clothes on probably tomorrow.